In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Good morning, everybody. We offer this Mass up this morning for Robin Henry. I apologize for the YouTube glitches again. We seem to have huge problems getting onto YouTube. I think there's just such huge volume, and if you're like me, you've received videos from all sorts of different people, and the result is that I think it's just blocking up a lot of YouTube. So we're battling to get on there. We can eventually get on, but it doesn't allow us to live stream. So I apologize for that. We have to do this as a video recording again, but we will try and move to Facebook from tomorrow. It seems to be the better, more logical option. We start Holy Week, or well, we started Holy Week yesterday, but this morning we have the Monday of Holy Week, and we have that wonderful image at Bethany in our Gospel today of Jesus having his feet, feet washed by Mary. And so that we might worthily celebrate these mysteries, humble ourselves, and enter into this Holy Week, let us first call to mind our sins and ask our Heavenly Father for his mercy and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that though in our weakness we fail, we may be revived through the passion of your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Isaiah. Behold my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not fail or be discouraged till he has established justice in the earth, and the islands wait for his law. Thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread forth the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you a covenant to the people, a light to the nations to open the eyes that are blind, to bring the prisoners from the dungeons and from the prison those who sit in darkness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life, whom shall I dread? The Lord is my light and my salvation. When those who do evil draw near to devour my flesh, it is they, my enemies and foes, who stumble and fall. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Though an army encamp against me, my heart would not fear. Though war break out against me, even then would I trust. The Lord is my light and my salvation. I believe I shall see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong, be stout-hearted, and wait for the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. Hail our King, 
you alone have had you alone have had mercy on our failings glory and praise to you o christ the lord be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to john glory to you o lord six days before the passover Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. There they made him a supper. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at table with him. Mary took a pound of costly ointment of pure nard, and anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the ointment. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, he who was to betray him, said, why was this ointment not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief, and as he had the money box, he used to take what was put into it. Jesus said, let her alone, let her keep it for the day of my burial. The poor you have always with you, but you do not always have me. When the great crowd of the Jews learnt that he was there, they came not only on account of Jesus, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests planned to put Lazarus also to death, because on account of him, many of the Jews were going away and believing in Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. In our Gospel today, there are a couple of themes moving through there. There is the religious concept that Mary was anointing the feet of Jesus and wiping them with her hair with this very expensive ointment that was fragrant that went through the house. But in that there is also a precursor of something that almost never happens, well it doesn't actually happen the precursor of anointing his body. They never had the chance to anoint his body. You remember, it was the day of Passover, and so they couldn't anoint him at his death. And so they had to go then two days later. And when they came on that Easter Sunday morning, they came, and he had risen. So there was never a point for them to fulfill that role, to fulfill that act of love, that final act of love. And so Jesus says, let her do it. Let her fulfill that act of love reminds us that we need to keep living and fulfilling acts of love. Don't wait until someone has died before we tell them how important they are to us. Don't wait until it is too late. And it can never happen to live those acts of love each and every day. But there's also the darker side of our humanity there. Our capacity to love versus that capacity of jealousy, that capacity of putting the other down at, at my expense. Judas, it would seem, wanted the money for himself. But the scribes and the Pharisees also wanted to put Lazarus to death, just simply because he was an obstacle to their authority, their power, their influence. So we have the two sides of the human nature at play. And as we enter Holy Week, we recognize that we are capable of great acts of love and great acts of self-centeredness and jealousy. But our first reading reminds us that we have to look to Jesus for the example, but also for the fulfillment of who we are called to be. It is he, the prophet says, that comes as the fulfillment of the law that brings us into relationship with God. When it comes to that deep theology of us uniting ourselves to that humanity of Jesus so that for the first time after the resurrection, we can participate in the life of the Trinity because Jesus is resurrected as human and divine. But we have to also work on our humanity. It's redeemed humanity. So as we enter into this Holy Week, a strange Holy Week, 
We recognize the possibilities of lockdown to think about, to evolve, to develop, to deepen, and to purify our humanity. And what better opportunity than to purify it, not only in our thoughts, but in with those who are locked down with us, with those possibly closest to us, those with whom we probably take out our frustrations, our difficulties, and the darker side of our character. So as we start this journey towards the cross, we keep in mind the resurrection and what it means to be a resurrected humanity. The truth is we're all called to holiness. We're called to be saints. We're not called to be just what we are today. And so keep striving for holiness. Keep striving to live that love rather than to give in to our baser, our baser character. Stay safe. Be kind to each other. Love. Anoint the feet of those around you, symbolically, because you never know if you will get the chance again. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours, that it might be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look graciously, O Lord, <clears throat> upon the sacred mysteries we celebrate here, and may what you have mercifully provided to cancel the judgment we incurred bear for us the fruit of eternal life, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For the days of his saving passion and glorious resurrection are approaching, by which the pride of the ancient foe is vanquished and the mystery of our redemption in Christ is celebrated. Through him the hosts of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, 
which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. <clears throat> Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Stephen, our Bishop, with Sylvester, his auxiliary, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. At home, we offer each other a sign of peace if we are not alone. If we are alone, we pray for peace. We pray for peace in the world, and especially those affected by COVID-19. May the mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive him. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Now is the time to make a spiritual communion. As always, I recommend the prayer of St. Alphonsus de Liguri. Let us pray. Visit your people, O Lord, we pray, and with ever watchful love look upon the hearts dedicated to you by means of these sacred mysteries, so that under your protection we may keep safe this remedy of eternal salvation, which by your mercy we have received. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We reached double digits today, so I wish you well, I wish you safety, I wish you grace, and keep always in mind that we have entered into Holy Week and that we have a purpose in this week. And the purpose is to make sure that we're ready to celebrate Easter. And we make ourselves ready. It isn't about anybody else really, um, but a love relationship with Jesus. It sounds selfish, but it's not, because that has to be lived. It has to be lived in each and every moment. And that is a selfless act. And so the selfless act is, going, is being kind to those around you, being kind to those in the greater community as best we can in the situation in which we find ourselves. It's always about a relationship with Jesus and how we live it. So stay safe, stay well, and God bless you for this very strange Holy Week. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May your protection, O Lord, we pray, defend the humble and keep ever safe those who trust in your mercy, that they may celebrate the Paschal festivities not only with bodily observance but also with a purity of mind. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Stay in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>